Hi, everybody. Thanks again for joining me today and um, for watching. Yeah, I hope you guys are having a great weekend so far. It's currently raining where I am. So if you're here in Vietnam, Hanoi to be specific, hope you guys are dry and safe. Right. So uh, we got a great question from Angela asking, can HIT or high intensity interval training help with fat loss? Cool. So I'm sure a lot of you guys are out there when I, the moment I said fat loss, wait, I'm listening. Okay. So what I want to be able to do is define HIT, let you know what HIT is all about. And we're also going to be looking at fat loss and in addition, understanding the difference between weight loss and fat loss as well. Right. So, um, let's define HIT. How many of you have done HIT? How many of you have pushed yourself so much to the point where you wanted to pass out or vomit? Right? If you've done that, possibly you might have been doing a HIT or a form of interval training. So let's define HIT. What is HIT? H is high intensity interval training. Okay, so let me say that again. HIT is H I I T, high intensity interval training. What does that mean? Okay, so if we break it down, high intensity interval training, high intensity will just be something where you're pushing almost to your max. So again, if you think about a scale of one to 10, one where you can do this all day, it's a whole hum type of thing, and 10 where you're about to vomit or you're vomiting already. And if we say 10 plus, you vomited and then pa passed out. <laughs> when you define High intensity, you're looking at about an 8, 9, 10, or even a 10 plus in terms of how hard you're going to be pushing. Okay. Now, when you look at interval, you're simply looking at working and resting. So it's very common that you're going to hear a work to rest ratio when you do an interval training. So you work for a certain amount of time and you rest for a certain amount of time and you do it again. That's pretty much interval training. So if you put it together, when you say high intensity, that means working from about 8 to 10, 10 plus in terms of intensity, and you work and rest, work and rest, then you have your high intensity interval training. Sounds good? So let's look at the other side, fat loss. But before I actually even get you to be understanding what fat loss is, there's a huge difference when you say weight loss and fat loss, and sometimes they're interchanged. But if we look at it from a training perspective or understanding what happens to your body, let's find out what fat loss and weight loss is and what's the difference. I have someone to help me here. You joining me? <laughs> Guess who's on board? <laughs> we have Divine who's going to be discussing the difference between weight loss and fat loss. All right, so um, when we talk about weight loss, it's simply putting the numbers lower on the scale. So it doesn't matter where the weight is coming from, but you say weight loss, you bring it down. So any change in movement in terms of adding on movement, any change in your diet in terms of lessening your calorie intake, fasting, or changing your nutrient intake for the better will bring the numbers in the scale down. All right. So for those who are wanting to have weight loss, if you're doing any kind of exercise, if you change the way you eat, you're definitely going to bring the numbers down on the scale. Right now, it's really important to also know the law of diminishing returns. Yeah. Okay. That what is law of diminishing returns to start with? So usually the more you have to lose, the bigger you are at the start and the lesser you have to lose, the slower and the harder it gets. Okay. So if you have a lot to lose, it goes fast and you lose a lot. But the minute you start getting fitter, like Divine said, it takes a little bit longer. You need more intensity to push. Okay. Now, when you are trying to lose weight, the body doesn't say where the weight comes from usually. So it means there's a mix of muscle and fat loss happening. Okay. Yeah. Now, anything cool. else you wanted to say? Well, who wants to do weight loss anyway? Just yeah. weight loss. Who wants to do just weight loss? Are you raising your hand? <laughs> or are you specifically saying, no, I want to lose fat? <laughs> yeah. So, so like, let's say for people who, um, whose job or whose daily life would require, has a weight requirement, let's say, um, flight attendants, 
if you're a person who's competing in a sport specific wherein they have a required weight or simply taking a ride have you ever been have you seen a friend get rejected and stopped from riding a ride or enjoying a ride just because we're talking about theme parks here not the bus not the train <laughs> <laughs> yeah just because they're overweight not because they're fat but simply because they're overweight yeah like i've seen um rides that will only have a maximum of 90 kgs or 100 kgs and so yeah right so there are some people that just need to lose weight they just really focus on the number now if we're looking at health perspective there are people that just need to simply lose weight no matter what but if we looking then at the specific thing that angela was asking fat loss how do we define fat loss, right? So we're looking now at body composition and there's two main things that's inside hey, the Dave. body. <laughs> Divine's here to say hi to everyone saying hello, right? Hello. Okay, so you have two main things, your muscles and your fat. Now, when we specifically say fat loss, that means we are wanting to maintain the muscle mass that you already have, right? <laughs> or you want to gain more muscle, but at the same time, bringing the fat inside your body lower. And that's what we mean by fat loss. So again, the difference between weight loss is putting the numbers down on the scale. And fat loss is actually changing your composition inside your body by reducing the fat levels, but maintaining the muscle mass you have or actually increasing the muscle mass. Okay. So now that we're clear with the difference between weight loss on its own and fat loss, and we kind of understand what HIT or high intensity interval training is, can high intensity, intensity interval training affect fat loss in the body? The answer is a big yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Yes, it does. So high intensity in interval training does help you lose fat. Now, uh, here we go. We have some people targeting weight loss. You can see that? Hey, Ansar. All right, cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, it's important to note, guys, that when, we, when I said that from... 1 to 10, 10 where you're about to pass out and 1 where it's so easy, the rate of intensity you feel will be different from the person beside you. My intensity is different from? My intensity. Right? So that scale is relative to the person. I might be going really fast and that's a 10 for me or an 8 maybe. I might be dying already, but Divine might be going faster thinking it's just a 6. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> So you have to understand that intensity is relative to the person. Now, also, how can you make sure you're pushing yourself 8, 9, 10, 10 plus in that intensity scale? First, you need to make sure you have good, good form and technique, which to get more results, guys, technique always has to come first. Your foundation to move should be there, right? So usually when we do high intensity interval training, we're looking at moving weights that challenge you. We're not just looking at the baby weights. We're looking at weights that challenge you. But at the same time, guys, you need to be able to have explosive movements at, uh, to, to get that power happening in your body. Okay. Is rest really important? Yeah. Big time. Okay. So rest is important. That work to rest ratio, rest is important for you to recover to be able to perform again. How long does a HIIT session last? It can be from about 10 minutes to 30 minutes. It depends on the type of exercises you're doing. It can be body weight exercises. It can be uh, moving with weight train, uh, weights, sorry, small equipment, or even the big weights. It can even just be a cardio-based interval training where you're running or sprinting for 10 seconds or 15 seconds and resting again. Let me cut you on that though. What kind of running? Is it like running on a treadmill or running outdoors? Or I would probably say running outdoors or running on a skill mill. If you've ever seen a skill mill self-powered, you can run and slow down and just like that. A treadmill takes time. Yeah, so, so like um, following up on that, if you notice a treadmill, you'll need to like push the button. <laughs> I'm running outdoors, push the button, but it takes time to go up. So by the time it actually reaches that ideal speed already, your time's up for the workout. All right, so when you use cardio-based machines to be doing high-intensity interval training, it's always best self-powered. So that would be your skill mills. That would be your uh, bikes, your rowing machines. And that's for traditional training, but what about for progressive training? What are we talking about? Progressive training, you can be jumping, you can be, I don't know. Yeah, talking about heart rate, intensity, rate of perceived exertion. Anything that brings your heart rate. 
All right. Now, something we want to talk about. Okay, Rika, so you're saying HIIT does work for fat loss. How does it help fat loss? So you may have heard the afterburn effect. You may have heard that HIIT makes you burn calories even while you're not exercising anymore. And yes, it's true. It's proven through science called, uh, through an effect called the EPOC, right? EPOC. EPOC. Not Ewok, Epoch, right? And if you're in the Middle East, it's not a gas station. <laughs> Epoch simply means, let me read it so I don't get it confused. Excess, post-exercise, oxygen consumption. Is Rika speaking in English? <laughs> Excess, post-exercise, oxygen consumption. It just simply means that there's an oxygen depth, which means... Your body needs a certain amount of oxygen inside to restore your body back to its normal metabolic rate. Like recovering, you mean? Pretty much. So while it's trying to bring you back down to your regular metabolic rate, it's actually up, so you end up burning more calories even after the session's done. And this after effect can last from two hours to about 24 hours, depending on how much you push as well. All right, so just think of it, guys. If you're really out to go for fat loss, yes, it does help, but remember, you need to make sure you are able to move well, you are able to control your body because it's going to be demanding a lot, but that a lot depends on your fitness level and ability as well. <laughs> I saw Eno. Eno. <laughs> it's <laughs> Epoch, right? Okay, so um, I hope, guys, this helps you understand that if you want to lose weight, you need to work with intensity, right? And if it's weight loss, just the bringing the needle down, any movement, any exercise will help. Oh, it's important to note, guys, that when you start moving with weights, your muscles get trained and they adapt. And because of that, muscles weigh heavier than fat. The needle may not necessarily be going down, which means you're not losing weight, could be staying steady or you might even gain more but the body shape changes oh size <laughs> size changes yeah so if you're really really looking to bring the scale down at some point yes it will go down but it's going to reach this point where it stops just because your body your muscles are getting more trained yeah a lot of diminishing returns exactly yeah now that's talking about the person who does hit training what about the trainers who conduct the HIIT training? Ooh. <laughs> is that you? <laughs> yeah, so, so, so what I'm just trying to point out here is a lot of people would like to kill, kill, kill. But think about it this way, trainers. Are you actually giving your clients, your participants or your members HIIT interval training? Or you're saying active rest, but you're still killing them on the active rest. Something to think about and maybe we can discuss on the, on the next training, right? So remember we said interval training means work and recovery. Rest. Make them recover, guys. Don't be mean. Don't let them crawl out of your session because if they crawl out, they might not come back. <laughs> so hope this session was helpful for you guys to actually understand um, what HIT is all about and also understand the difference between weight loss and fat loss and how it can help everybody start losing weight. But remember, again, a certain amount of fitness is needed to be able to push at a high intensity, right? So again, thank you to everybody who's watching. I'm seeing all the messages now. So Rania, Ehab, thank you so much again um, for Mino. watching us. Mino. Winnie, you Winnie. made it! <laughs> uh, if you guys have any questions or topics that you guys want us to discuss, and hey, send us thumbs up or hearts if you want to see Divine on a little bit more of her uh, videos with me. <laughs> I'm trying, guys. I'm trying. <laughs> so it took me a while to get her onto the camera, but yeah. Thank you so much again, guys. Thanks, Angela. And bye. See you bye. guys again.